Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Today, I am going to share my review of Vesson, The Lost Mountain Saga from Free League Publishing. It's written by Eleanor DiLorenzo with Tomas Harenstam and Kiku Puck Harenstam. Artwork is provided by Johan Eggerkranz and Anton Vitus. And I do apologize. I guarantee I've mispronounced at least one of those names, probably more than one. This 84 page hardcover is available now. It carries an MSRP of $39.99, which does include the PDF if you order from Free League Publishing. You can grab just the PDF alone over at Drive Through RPG for $19.99. All that said, let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got the Lost Mountain Saga. A few things I want to mention before I jump on in. First of all, my friends over at Free League Publishing were kind enough to provide me with this review copy, but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share this review with you. These days, it's very, very important that you know that we're also not going to look at each and every page of the book, but I do want to give you a very good feel for what's in this adventure campaign and share my thoughts about it. Having said that, this is an adventure campaign. So if you are a Vison player and maybe your game master has already purchased the Lost Mountain Saga or maybe they're considering picking this up, definitely recommend Tune Out Now. You don't want the surprises of this campaign ruined simply because you watch this review. And as much as I try to stay away from major spoilers, here there be spoilers. So you have been warned. Now, having said that, if your game master is thinking about picking this up, tell them about this review. So that way they can approach this book and make an informed buying decision. Last thing I want to mention is the author, Eleanor DiLorenzo, just recently welcomed a new addition to her family. So congratulations and well wishes on the new baby. I'm sure <laughs> things are so hectic right now. Our author is probably sitting there thinking, The Lost Mountain, what? Oh yeah, that's right, I wrote that. <laughs> All right, let's dive on in. I do want to mention production quality wise, it is what we have come to expect from Free League Publishing, really nice, thick paper stock. This book is gonna hold up very nicely at your game table. Sadly though, there is not a lot of new artwork contained in the Lost Mountain Saga. Granted, the little portraits of NPCs, those are for the most part new, but a lot of the artwork here and some of the full page art I have seen in a multitude of Vason books. So some of these images have been utilized more than twice now in Vason. And I gotta be honest, this is the first campaign for Vason. And I'm a little disappointed that we didn't see more new artwork to really make this stand out. Because as far as the adventures in the campaign, it's really, really well done. All right, so this is the first campaign for Vason. And as I've mentioned before in previous reviews, I really like this system, I really like this setting, but I don't feel that it lends itself all that well to long-term campaign play. A couple of adventures that tie together, sure, but something that you're gonna play for a year, as far as real time-wise, not so much. And part of it is because of the mechanics of the system. There aren't a lot of rules for advancement of the player characters, and the adventures have pretty much been presented as Monster of the Week tales, where the player characters are members of a society and they get contacted and they go out to investigate something, which always involves Vason hopefully solve the problem, and then they just return back to their headquarters. Not so much here. 
And I was very happy to see that. Now, there are five adventures that make up this campaign. And the overall theme of this revolves around these green stones that are only found in this one mine. And the mine has been closed for a long, long time following a devastating accident. So we have some circles that believe that these stones are going to provide immense power and should be used for military purposes, which could essentially change the balance of power in Europe and really launch Sweden into the forefront. And then there are other circles who feel that this is not stuff that humans should be messing with. So we have that aspect, which is really our thread that runs through these five adventures are these stones. Now in this first adventure, the player characters are gonna be drawn in by an NPC on something completely unrelated. So the introduction of these stones are kind of a minor point. So the player characters might actually think they're just a MacGuffin. Doesn't have anything to do with this story. Well, that's not actually gonna be the case. Now, something else that happens in the first adventure that I really like is that this NPC that draws the player characters in is gonna be killed. And nothing the players do is gonna change that fact. But they don't know that. So I can guarantee you a great many players out there are going to think, uh-oh, something we did or something we didn't do led to this NPC's death. And I really like the fact that that usually will draw your players further in to an adventure campaign. So really nicely done. In fact, the threads that tie these adventures together are nicely presented. And I should point out that this adventure campaign is based on an actual play podcast, which was run by Eleanor DiLorenzo, which is called, amazingly enough, The Lost Mountain Saga. So once again, as I had mentioned, the artwork being recycled, I've seen this piece in at least three Vason books. Uh, and once again, as I said, it's disappointing that we don't get a bunch of new artwork to go with this first adventure campaign for Vason. So then we have the four other adventures. And as these adventures continue, the player characters are going to learn a bit more about these stones. And they're going to realize these stones are a bigger deal than they originally thought. Now, I would say probably out of the five adventures, my favorite is where the sun dies. And it's because it's got a bit of a Wicker Man vibe to it, as well as sort of a Cthulhu mythos uh, kind of angle, although there is no mythos, right? We, we don't have the Cthulhu mythos in Vason, but it sort of has that cultist sort of angle to it. And I get the feeling that it draws a bit of inspiration from John Carpenter's The Thing, not by way of the monster, not by way of the vason involved, but as far as the environment. So really, really cool. And this adventure also has uh, a bit of a visual, which many of the adventures do have. And I think this is one of those kind of vibes that you get where it's like, oh yeah, okay, this was an actual play podcast. And that is that at the end of the adventure, the player characters are leaving on this boat from this island. And the villagers are there at the dock and they're all dressed in black and they're watching the boat leave. And they just stand there and continue to watch the boat and the player characters probably looking back at them. And as the island gets smaller and smaller and that dock gets smaller and smaller and those, those villagers become little dots, they just keep standing there <laughs> watching. I guarantee 
my players would be sitting there like, what the hell's going on? And it's never explained, but it's a nice visual to paint for your players. A bit theatrical, sure, but personally, I think very, very cool, very creepy. And there are quite a few of those in here. Uh, there are some aspects uh, in these adventures. I don't know if it's intentional, but I also feel that some of these draw a little bit of inspiration from some Hammer horror films of the day. Very cool. Very, very cool. So we're going to have the five adventures, and we're eventually going to see this come full circle, where the player characters are going to find themselves back where that mine is, which is now reopened. And there is a big research facility that has been built. And you're going to find that everything is going to come to a head. Now, if you're not overly familiar with Vesson, one of the big themes of the game is the old ways clashing against modernity. The pagan beliefs clashing against organized religion. And I have to say that those themes don't overwhelm this adventure campaign, but they are there. And I really like the fact that we do see that because those themes are kind of an underlying aspect of just about every Vesson adventure I can think of. And I like that. I think that is one of the cool selling points of Vason is that it's folk horror, but it's not as I refer to as hillbilly horror, which I know we've got a lot of focus as of late on this kind of Appalachian horror. And I'm not knocking it. And I don't say hillbilly horror as an insult either. In fact, the term hillbilly isn't an insult if you look up the history of that term. But this is folk horror as opposed to Appalachian horror. Even though we have the Lost Mountain Saga, I'm sure a lot of people probably jump to that conclusion that, oh, yeah, this is just kind of riding on the coattails of that Appalachian old gods of Appalachia podcast sort of thing. It doesn't. Not in the least bit really like these adventures quite a lot and i have to say adventure wise this is my favorite vesson book that has come out i really really like just the the little set pieces that are in here the bit of inspiration that i have i've kind of gleaned from some of the adventures which i could be way off base but a lot of thought has gone into how these adventures present themselves to your players and what your players are going to get out of these adventures. As with just about every Vison adventure, all the adventures in this campaign, the cost of failure is pretty dark and dire. I will point out though, the conclusion of this adventure it's a given that the player characters don't fail. So there really isn't, okay, this is what's going to happen if you don't pull this off. So I, I will mention that, but the other four adventures really do have some pretty dire consequences if the player characters are not successful. So we wrap up with some handouts, and that is a look inside Vason the Lost Mountain Saga from Free League Publishing. Let's sway on over to the other camera because I'm going to share some final thoughts as well as my review score. So as I just said, this is my absolute favorite adventure release for Vason. I really like it quite a lot, but I do have some issues with it. Not a whole lot with the actual content and the adventures, more so on the pricing and presentation. So let me talk about the adventures first. There is a little bit of 
I almost want to use the word discombobulation, but that wouldn't be it. I would say that some of the adventures, especially the first adventure, feels a little disjointed. So as I was reading through the adventure, all of a sudden we get to this, the confrontation essentially, right? If you're familiar with the way basin adventures are laid out, we get a breakdown of what is the conflict? What is, what is the conflict going on here? And then we always have another portion that says, okay, this is the confrontation. This is our finale. This is where the rubber meets the road. And it was kind of strange because we jumped to the confrontation and I thought, wait a second, how did, hold on, how did we get here? Wait a second, did I miss something? And I went back a couple of pages and I read through again and I was like, okay, it was kind of abrupt. Where it's suddenly, oh, here we are, we're at the confrontation. And it's, it's essentially, it's a witch trial. And the way the adventure is presented, it's not obvious how we reach that fever pitch of a witch trial. It's kind of like, huh, okay. I also find the finale of the adventure is kind of abrupt. I would have liked to have seen a bit more of it drawn out with a, a few more scenes to it, as opposed to, boom, we're at the end. But all in all, that's really the only small critiques I have of the adventure campaign, because all in all, really do like the adventures, and I think they will be pretty spooky for your players if, you know, you're a solid game master. So where I have the larger issues is, number one, seeing so much of the artwork within previously. That is very, very disappointing, especially since I think it's a big deal that this is the first adventure campaign for Vason. Also, the pricing. And yes, I get it. I understand. Price of paper has gone up. Price of publishing has gone up. But still, $39.99. Now we're at 84 pages. Previous release, $39.99. I want to say off the top of my head, it was 96 pages. So we're looking at $40, but less than 100 pages of content. And now for this new release, $40, less than 90 pages of content. So yes, so honestly, I get it. Everywhere you look, role-playing game books are going up in price. What I would like to see in this case, and I know it's probably going to be blasphemy to many of you out there, but I would not have minded seeing thinner paper stock than what we're used to seeing. And I'll explain why. This is an adventure book. This is not a core rule book. So this is going to be utilized for most game masters once. With their gaming group, they're going to use this for whatever number of sessions it would take to complete the campaign, and then that's going to be it. Now, if you're a game master who tends to give your books away to other game masters out there, fantastic. Because, of course, get as much use out of it as you possibly can. But the reality is, most game masters are going to run a campaign and then put it up on the shelf. We could get away with thinner paper stock than in... So we certainly could get away with thinner paper stock than in, say, a core rule book, which is going to be utilized quite a lot over the years, unless you've got a photographic memory, then you don't need to look through it all that often. But once again, I got to knock this because of the pricing and the page count, as well as the recycling of artwork. But having said this, this is my favorite adventure release yet for Vason. 
Review score wise, The Lost Mountain Saga is coming in with the same score as Seasons of Mystery. But the reason why is because I've knocked the score down a little bit because of the artwork issue and where I feel that it's a little overpriced. So adventure wise, the best yet. And I really, really like it. So on a scale of zero to 10, I give Vason the Lost Mountain Saga an 8.5 out of 10. I really do recommend it. Really like it a lot. Just some quibbles, mainly about the pricing and the artwork. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that bell. It'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, it'll also inform you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegamingang.com for all latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more you're not gonna find here on the YouTube channel. You know the drill? Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thank you very much for taking time out to watch this review. And until I see you next time, here's hoping all of you out there get to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang.